Elena. I'm joined by Christy. Christy is a graduate of the 360 Impact Health Program. And we're coming into your way, your airways today. I'm already stumbling with my words here, but we're coming your way just to share a message of hope. So Christy, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, Christy had uh, been diagnosed with Graves' disease and she had a goiter when she reached out to me. So today we're going to really take a few minutes, um, about 20, 30 minutes, see how much, uh, how many questions you all have. But we're going to look at the process through which he, she had to uh, go to create her story. For me, Christy, when I had uh, thyroid issues, it was lots of years of struggle, was eight years in the making and then diagnosis and then prognosis and all of that and eventually culminated into this journey. So for you, I'm sure that you went through the same thing. So why don't we do this? Why don't you kick us off by just telling us a little bit about, you know, the past, how did it all start for you? Well, it all started about 15 years ago. So I have been struggling with it for a while. At first it didn't really bother me until I had my children. And then <laughs> after that, it seemed to bother me a little bit more. And so I reached out to you about a year ago. I wasn't, didn't think I was quite ready yet. And then recently I did again. And that time I had already had my thyroidectomy scheduled when I read. Ah, so yeah, let me stop you here for a moment. So you said when you had kids like that, that started to show up more. So what were the symptoms that showed up for you? The symptoms for me were, was a very fast heart rate and um, some palpitations sometimes. That wasn't that much of a symptom. And um, the gorder that you mentioned before. And um, those were my three main issues. Sometimes I was tired. Even mm -hmm. having Graves' disease, which is hyper, I was I was tired too as well. And then I couldn't sleep at night, you know. And Which makes things even harder, especially when you have a couple of children to raise. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And so um, do you want me to go ahead and tell you about Yeah. So things? I, I want to hear more. So when you reached out to me earlier this year, I remember the emails. If it was yesterday, it was more like, Elena, we need to talk because things got worse since last year. Because last year you were not ready when you reached out. This year got ready. And, and then what it got me was like, Okay, and I'm scheduled to have a thyroidectomy. We got only like a few weeks to go. I'm like, oh, oh my God, okay. <laughs> We've never had like that kind of timetable to work on. But why, right. why don't you take me through the process and how it was for you emotionally to face this fact that I'm scheduled to have a thyroidectomy? Right. It, it was scary. And I mean, I don't know if everyone knows, but how much your thyroid affects everything in your body. It's so... And I was like, I don't want to lose that. That will affect so much stuff in my body. So I was fighting everything to keep keep it. So I had gone to actually gone to a surgeon before I, you know, reached out to you. And he told me, you know, with my my resting heart rate was in the 90s. Before I met you. <laughs> yeah, which Before is for those of you who are watching right now, that's not, not a normal, that's elevated heart rate. Mine is about 100 when I work out. And I mean, I'm jogging and then I'll stop if I take my heart rate. It's about 100. Your rest and heart rate should be about, you know, high 50, 60, 70. It depends on the person. So 90s for a heart and uh, uh, for a resting heart rate is pretty scary. Yes. And he told me, the surgeon told me I needed to schedule it right then because I could die in my sleep. So that was, that was not scary. scary at all. That was very scary. So that was the worst part. And so of course I, you know, no brainer, I scheduled it that day. So then it got closer to the time. And then I was like, I just really don't want to do this. And I knew, I mean, I thought I had tried everything. I'm one of those that tried everything. You can ask my mom and my husband <laughs> and even my girls know I've tried everything. Mm -hmm. so, I, so I thought. And you told me, which is so true, you're the Hail Mary of healthcare. <laughs> so, I do. So I do. Everything? Whenever anybody comes to me, they're like, I've tried this and this. I'm so usually it's medication and surgeries and doctors and this. I'm like, yeah, people don't come to me because like, I'm feeling so great. How do I not get worse? They're usually like, hey, I'm about to have a thyroidectomy and the Google and the Hail Mary comes up. <laughs> <laughs> so that was me. 
but I am, I mean, like, I'm so glad. I mean, I can't tell you how glad I am that I did. And written. it was a struggle, you know, talking with my husband and like, you know, I really want to try this. Well, hadn't you tried this, this, and this too? And that didn't work. Why do you think this is going to work? Yeah. Can we put like a attack here a moment, actually stop here uh, for a moment and explore this a little bit, Christy, because we see that with a lot of uh, women who are in partnerships and marriages is that you're the one who lives in the pain and the struggle. You're the one who is facing like, my throat is going to be cut open. The thyroid is going to be either burnt out or taken out. And yes, we do have well-meaning partners who love us, but on the other hand, they don't live in this body and yet they have opinions. How was that for you? Well, uh, I mean, I understood because he's seen me go through it all. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, are you going to try? I'm going to the naturopath and it's $700 because they don't take insurance, you know, mm -hmm, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to this person and they don't take insurance either. Well, why do we have insurance if you're going to keep going to those doctors that don't mm -hmm. take insurance? I said, well, they're the ones that want to get to the root of the thing, yeah. but they were never able to with me. Right. Right. And, and unfortunately, and I always joke about this, but anything that works is usually not covered by insurances. It's my, my hope <laughs> and the goal in life that one day health coaches will be covered by insurances, but it is. So the big goal is here is to get well, to never get sick again. So you don't even right. have to think about expenses. Right. Okay. So back, back to this point. So you and I are talking and, and we're talking, okay, maybe you have not tried everything. And there's a huge step for you to take. Was that scary for you? was very scary after someone tells you you could die in your sleep, you know, any day now because your heart rate's so high and I have children and I, you know, <laughs> I, I have a lot to live for. Yeah. You're I'm very young. Daughter. You have a husband who loves your children. <laughs> your uh, Christy is a yoga instructor. So there's a lot to live for the passion and there as well. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's true. Okay. And then we start working together. Tell me about your big, Big, you know, that the ups and the downs every time we're there, and what was the well, walk me through well, your process? Because you know, we can talk about the small details, right? The diet and everything, but I'm really always interested in internally, it's always a, a game of your mindset, it, exactly. So, I went through you know, your program, and I was cruising along, thought I was doing everything right, thought I was doing everything, mm -hmm. and then it got towards the end. And I actually got to meet Achi. So these people are real that you. <laughs> that I interviewed you know, before. You know, you're real. And so um, I had seen Achi and Nikki, the teacher, and like my whole family, they were all, they're all teachers and stuff. So she, Nikki and Achi were my, the main reason, you know, I mm -hmm. saw them and they had Graves disease and yeah. same thing. I have thyroid stuff. And so you let me talk to Achi. And I was like, oh, she's real. And that was another thing my husband asked. How do you even know these people are even real? <laughs> well, right. You know, you find me even though, so you've known my work for over a year. Most women, when they find me, it's like three days later. And there is a lot of the skepticism. Like, how do you, I had a guy recently tell me, well, how do you know you didn't pay these people? I'm like, well, no, these people right. pay me. <laughs> but it is, you get to a point asking yourself a question. If everything else did not work, why would this work? But on the other hand, a part of you still hopes it would work. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly right. So I had talked to her and she gave me that second wind I needed. And I really did everything right. And you gave me that second wind. You know, you, um, you're so encouraging and and I mean, you have all the knowledge. I mean, like your knowledge is, <laughs> is all, I mean, I just can't. Remember. It's all the struggles of my life. Plus people like <laughs> Achi and Nikki and you and everybody right. else is because, you know, and, and the, here, here's the process of this. Uh, there, there are a lot of programs and things out there, treatments that are kind of like just design it and then make everybody fit into it as opposed to make it fit around people's lives. And each per person is different. Mm -hmm. So you, you're a busy mom, you're working, uh, you, you have a business that you're working on, right? All of these things, they have to work in synchronicity. So the first few weeks for you, uh, let's talk about that. We're not, we did not see immediate outcomes, right? No, so you, you had to, you had to hang in there before your body responded for how long? Well, yeah. So I have had it for almost 15 years now. So I didn't think it would happen overnight, but I mean, what was it for months or something? Three months. And I think we had that big conversation. We're like, okay, let's go really extreme. Yes. And then I think what was it within 
like um, a week or two later when you send me a picture of your goiter before and your goiter now. Yes. And I was like, whoa, yes. like, this is how much extreme yeah. can really work. <laughs> I know that picture is amazing. So, I mean, that's something to look at right there. And so, oh, oh, and here's the biggest thing that I haven't even told you yet. I went to um, the doctor just last week and my blood work is in perfect range Woo! My <laughs> I'm what, trying not to scream or I'll make people this death. This is what we look at with you. I literally got up in his office and he said, Woo! You know, he said, that's impressive. My doctor said, that's impressive. Yeah. So, and while I was waiting on him, I put on my watch so I could see my heart rate. Mm -hmm. And so I put on my watch 72 in waiting in the doctor's office. 72 and 72 like, no heart rate that is being is that, that so you're not going to die in your sleep your your children right. are going to have their mom and your husband is going to have his wife right, right. well that's exciting tell me so that tell, I, i've heard this but tell the women about your process with so when the goiter began to shrink how did you discover that how did you see that well i had i you teach us some things to do but and then I had actually prayed. I talked to Achi and she was like, she, her faith had been strengthened. And she Absolutely. told me, that, you know, she prayed about it. And, you know, you're used, to, well, I am used to praying for everybody else. You don't think mm -hmm. to pray for yourself. like. Mm -hmm. And so I started doing that and, and the things that you've had me implement. And um, I think eating was a big, big one. That was the our extreme when we went all the yes, way in. We went all in. All in. And and we did. And I did. And I think that that is the main thing that did it. The eating and the praying and some other things. So, that yeah, you so the mindset, the lifestyle, the all of it. You were already active, so it's not like you needed to take that part. So walk me through this process. I remember when you at one point you emailed me, it's like my heart is still rate is still elevated and then starts to go down. And then so before this last week, you got labs done where your doctor told me that you're in re going into remission now. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, <laughs> like I said, in the office, when he told me, he, I already had the blood work done. And so he was reading it and he said, that's impressive. So I stood up in his office and was like, yay. And he said, you must have been working hard. He said, I mean, he knew. Well, and, and that alone from somebody who tells you at first that it's irreversible, then now it says you must be working hard. So a part of this is almost admission, like it does work. Yes. Something works. So that means it's not, not, irre, not ir, irreversible anymore. It's double negative almost. But so the th things that we don't know about in the Hail Mary phase, we find out that things are pretty much everything is reversible. Yes, it is. And I mean, I, I had nev never found what that was going to be until I met you. <laughs> so let's talk about this. You, you canceled the surgery. I did. I sure did. You kept your thyroid and right now you're on track. So the big goal here is get it even better. So completely the foregoiter to completely disappear because I mean, if you got it to reduce as much as you did, there's no reason for it not to be gone completely. Right. Keep going. So, yeah. Yeah. So mentally when you started off, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I'm going to die. But I want it to be different too. I'm canceling the surgery and I'm keeping it off. What What's the process here for you? Oh, I, it, it was prayer. <laughs> like I said, yes. A lot of prayer. Talking, talking to someone else who's been there like yeah. Achi and I'm in and other, other ladies in the group, you know, listening to them and what they have accomplished and um, just, just hearing some things that have worked for others and, and they work yeah, for wasn't me. that encouraging? A lot of people to do this one-on-one -on -one with a coach, one-on-one -on -one with doctors, we do it in a group setting, mm -hmm. but we, and we see it all the time that somebody else's success can propel you so much faster to your own. Wouldn't you agree? It, I, definitely. That was very helpful. And that at first, my husband was uh, like, why, why do you have to do it in a group? You know, that kind of thing. And I was like, well, I had learned so much. I've learned a lot from, from other people who have gone through, you mm -hmm. know, almost the same thing. Yeah, well, it, it's encouraging then somebody else's struggles and somebody else's questions, they propel you to, first of all, you, you feel like I'm not alone in this, right? Right. Second of all, if they can do it, so can I. Right. And so it's absolutely so. 
you're uh, you're on the back end of it right now. So you're not 100% there yet. And this is why I love this interview. So it's not like, and one day she was really, really bad. And now she's so amazing. <laughs> You're still in a process. The goal is to keep this going until you're in 100% remission. What is it that you, because you graduated, so you're out of the program and now you're self-sustaining. How do you sustain that mindset and the faith and the lifestyle to not go back to where you were before? I love it. I love the way I'm eating. I feel so good. Um, I have energy and um, other than the other, like the, the, you know, the prayer and meditation and all, and then the yoga mm -hmm. that I have decided. And you were a big push in that too. I mean, I, you know, I was going, ah, should I do it? Should I not? And all that. And then you were like, go for it. And I'm so glad I did. So. Um, and just to clarify for those of you who are watching right now, yes, Christy is already a yoga instructor, but she was looking for multiple certifications. And that was the whole like, should I, shouldn't I? And we're all about this. So it's not just health coaching, it's life coaching. We're all about knowing your personality, knowing your dreams and fulfilling them actually leads you to faster healing as opposed to always doubting, always being lost. And women don't realize, wouldn't you agree, Christy, how sometimes living in that status quo, like I'm not really happy. Yes, I'm a mother. Yes, I'm this, but you're not fulfilled. That can actually add to the list of symptoms. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Well, like, like I told you, I had gone down and, and deleted like so many emails because I was following this person. I was following that. Yes. And I was, you know, doing this. And my mom was <laughs> instrumental in this. She was like, you need to find one person and stick with them. Yes. And I found her. <laughs> uh, it's so fantastic. So is your husband happy with your outcomes? He is. He's very happy that I don't have to have the surgery right now. Anyway. <laughs> well, that well, that means never because you, you, if you are here, so you got there within about four months, four months, we had four months together. In next four months, it's very possible and plausible that you're at 100% goal completely. It is. And then after that, medication free. And after that, just live into your fullest. Right. Well, we have women watching right now and there will be watching later. If you had one advice to give them right now, what would it be? Go do it. Just do it. Because I, I was struggling with whether to do it or not. And For I a whole year and a half. Back and forth, like, just like that with the other things. I was following this person, following that person. Elena will get you there. <laughs> well, thank you. On your journey uh, between when you started and where you are now, and now you're loving this new lifestyle, what were your biggest challenges? And then after that, what I want to hear is between the diet and the mindset, and in your case, mindset and prayer, what do you find is the biggest contributor to you to getting yourself to where you are now? I don't know that I could say one thing. I think mm -hmm. it was all of the things together. So the diet was big for me when I decided to go all in, you know, it was there. I was already, you know, I was already healthy, I thought. And now mm. I can't look back and say that that was as healthy as I thought it was because now I don't see me ever going back to what I did before this, what I thought was a healthy way of eating. And um, my lifestyle was pretty healthy already. Mm -hmm. like I, said, I was doing some silver sneakers classes yes. and working with um, that population. And so I was already, I thought, pretty healthy right. lifestyle. But well, and that, that's what makes it harder, right? Hard. What else can there be if I already do all of these things? Right. Yes. So for you, it's a combination of things. It is the diet. It is the mindset. It is everything else. Because sometimes I see, I, I do get a lot of clients who have perfect diets sometimes, even by my standards, wow. but yet they're struggling. <laughs> so we know there's more to health than that. So last question here before we take any questions. And by the way, if you have any questions for Christy or myself, type them out right now. But what was your biggest aha moment during this transition period going from I'm going to have a surgery to I don't have to have a surgery? Well, my heart rate was a huge thing mm -hmm. when I learned that it was in the low 70s after being in the 90s for I don't know how many years, you know, too many. I mean, too many, too many to be safe, right? Yeah, it was too many. And so I was so glad that was one of the big things. Well, I guess that was probably the biggest was when my heart rate went down and I was like, Whew. because I can, I've got time now, you know, 
because if that wouldn't have gone down, I wouldn't have had the time. You know. To, yeah. So you bought yourself time, about- but again, going at the rate that you went so far. Mm-hmm. You know, Achi, you you watched Achi, right? Achi right. just celebrated. She's at about almost two years and nine months in in uh, complete remission. And for her, that was the thing. Like, how far can we go? Seventy-five yeah. percent, then it's over ninety percent. Then she had the eye uh, for uh, those of you who are, who are watching right now. When you have a Graves' disease that can progress into a thyroid eye condition, when the eyes start bulging out of your eye sockets and become really dry, it's hard to see. So Achi had that, and she had a, a surgery scheduled to have the uh, eye surgery. And then as she was getting better, they postponed it and they postponed it. And now we're almost three years later and they still have not had the surgery. And now they're telling her she does not need the surgery. So it, it's, I, I see the same going for you, right? Postpone it and postpone it until your body is completely well on its own. That's right. Well, fantastic. Let's see. Um, Trina had a question. If you always had a high, high, high heart rate, two H's in the row, I couldn't spit it out. <laughs> Was that always something that you struggled with or was it just the last 15 years? Well, I knew. Oh, yeah. Yes, definitely. Since I had Graves' disease, since I found yeah. out I had the autoimmune disease, it was high, but I don't know. I just started really noticing it in the last few years, maybe three or four years. Mm-hmm. I never checked it before. I'm sure it was high before. And I, he had, my endocrinologist had said something to me before about it you know, being high, he said, you know, if my heart rate was as high as yours. I mean, he said, I feel like my heart would be coming yeah. out of my chest, but I guess I got so used to it. that I just didn't really know. You adjust to the new way of doing things. And, and uh, Trina mentioned that her, her heart rate right now is between 95 and 118. Now that's like me really running right, yes, really, really, really hard. And then going, <gasps> so it would be hard. It's hard on your heart. It's hard, hard, hard on your system. So it's certainly something, uh, Trina, if you go to the website, first of all, the link that I, I posted that you can schedule the health clarity call with me to see what's possible. Second of all, do what uh, Christy has done. Go to your website, 360impacthealth.com and look at Archie's um, interview there. There's Nikki. Uh, Christie's will be there soon. And these are the women who have had a uh, hyperthyroidism, Graves disease, and were able to completely reverse it. So Nikki, she's in remission and we're about to celebrate, I think we're at about two year mark now, something like that. So it's, it's pretty amazing, but that is possible. But a 95 to 118, that is, I don't think ever uh, should be a resting heart rate. So well, fantastic, fantastic. Thank you so much. Ladies, if you have any further questions, make sure to leave a comment. We'll respond to them as we go for now. I just want to say thank you, Christy, so much for taking the time and being here with us. And I wish you nothing but our goal, right, for you, 100% booming business, your children being happy, and, of course, at the end, you having the peace of mind that you're here for the long haul. That's right. Yep. And thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you.